All right, guys, welcome back for a new video today. Today is a little bit different. I am starting this kind of a new series, shorter video where we are going to talk about a package today, a bottom navigation bar package. Uh, it's a tremendously important part of your app in today's world where most of the app that we're using on a daily basis, they're all using bottom navigation bar and they have some options built in Flutter in order for you to create your bottom navigation bar. But today I really want to present you a package that I have been using for a few years now really because it's super useful. It maintains the state throughout the different navigation that you'll have. And so without further ado, let's jump right into it. So I have created here uh, a new Flutter project. It's an empty one and you have it running on the emulator on the left. And the package that we're talking today is the persistent bottom navigation bar version two because the version one uh, was dis discontinued. I mean, it's not continued. So it's the continuation of that uh, package. And uh, you'd see it's super easy to implement. And actually, if you've been on the channel before uh, following the longer tutorials, you might have seen me uh, using that package for, for instance, the Tinder app that we've created. Uh, and so I'm going to show you very straightforward how it works. And I like to combine this package with the Font uh, Awesome Flutter package that provides you with a gigantic library of uh, cool icons. And so we're gonna mix those two packages today uh, in order to create the perfect bottom navigation bar. So as you can see, you have, the ch you have so many different styles that are built in directly into the package. And to be quite fair with you, you could create a branch from the GitHub and create your own designs. But from all of those different styles, I mean, you are pretty much covering every needs that you'd ever need right uh, so let's jump right into it so as you can as you can see first what we're going to do is we're going to copy uh, the package and within our perspect that yaml file here under dependencies we're going to paste uh, and save uh, the package and as we're doing this we are also going to take the font uh, awesome flutter package and same paste it under uh, the uh, persistent bottom navigation bar once that done uh, and we are uh, we have no errors normally, uh, we'll be able to use it. So be, while that, that thing is doing, uh, it's cooking, we can create a little bit the file structure. So uh, you, you're now normally familiar with the way I work and in the way I create my files, right? So what I would normally do is here under the lib folder, create a new file that we'll call app.dart, right? Then another file that I'll call app view the dart okay and under that uh, i will also create a new folder that i will call screens for example doesn't really matter um, and from that here for instance i will create uh, a new folder that i will call home and a new folder that i will call profile for example right and under those two folders i will create let's be very simple now home.dart and profile.dart. So those two are going to be screens, right? Profile and, uh, and home. But we are not really interested about that right now. What we want to do uh, is here under lib, create a new folder that, I, that we will call components. And under this folder, we're gonna create a new file and we are gonna call that uh, persistent, persistent nav, something like this persistent uh, persistent nav dot dart. I think persistence is with an A, right? No, it's with an E, that's fair. Persistent nav, and this is where we are going to create our uh, navigation bar, right? Our uh, bottom navigation bar, a custom one. But before we do that, let's create those uh, those little files, right? So you would have your, your main dot dart file that will contain your uh, normally your run up here and your call with Firebase and everything, but we're not gonna do that today, okay? And what we're just gonna do is copy the main app that was right there, right? And we are within the app.dart file, paste that thing right here, and this is where we're gonna have our main app, okay? And the main app is 
basically where here you'd see you normally would have your material app but it's not what we want what we want here normally would be the repository provider for our entire app okay so we are just going to skip that thing for now and just say that here instead of returning that let's say here we would have the repository providers uh, uh, for the app okay and so what we would return here normally is a repository provider, but since we don't import block or anything, we're just gonna return my app view, okay? And now within, up, within the app view dart, we can create a stateless widget that we will call my app view, okay? And import that file within the app dart, okay? And here, that's where we will return the material app. Okay, so that's just file structure, right? Sorry, oh, it's just file structure. So don't really worry about that. And here in our main.dart, we can import app.dart. Save that file, okay? And again, here on the app.dart, normally you'd have your repository provider. So now it's more, it's absolutely useless to have that as is, but in the structure of the files for you to understand, that's better to do it like this. And then you have your appview.dart with the actual material app here. And the material app right there is where normally you would have under the home, a parameter of your material app, the block builder that will say if you're logged in or not and redirect you to the login screen or to the app. But here we are straight up going to redirect to the persistent, uh, persistent tab uh, screen. Okay. And let's create that file now within our persistent nav bar, okay? And so if we base ourselves from the package, you'd see how it's supposed to work. So they tell you how to do it. So you need first to create a controller, right? So what I'm going to do here is create a stateful widget that I'm gonna call persistent uh, tab screen. That's what we call persistent tab screen, okay? And here, uh, under uh, the state, I'm going to create the controller. So as they provide it to you, so first you need to import the package, right? But as they provided it to you, it's not really how you should do it. How you should do it is within the init state, initialize the controller, right? So you create the init state method, and then within that, you create the controller. And so now is telling you that it must be initialized, but since we are initializing it in the init state, that works. Okay, so now we can save that, okay? Go back to the package and see what they are telling us next. Well, this is the persistent tab view. So what we can do is copy the entire thing, the entire uh, thing under the return, and just paste that here, okay? Into our build uh, function, okay? And you'd see that up there they are there are some methods that we can uh, that we need in order for it to work right the build screen and the navbar items okay and so if we navigate back to the package you'd see here we have the build screens and the navbar items so i can take build screen okay which is simply a list all right so i'm going to paste that thing here up tac so it's the list of the different screen that we will create, okay, that we will have on our bottom bar, and then the uh, nav bar items, which are the actual items that, that will be shown, sorry, I didn't copy that thing, uh, that will be shown onto the app bar itself, right? Uh, so we can copy that as well. And here the Cupertino uh, icons, we need to import that thing, but we are gonna change it, so don't worry about it. So now we have everything that's needed for the persistent tab bar to work, right? Except some errors, but here, before uh, we can actually start really doing it, under screen home, home.dart, we're gonna create a stateless widget that we will call home, okay? And here we're gonna return a scaffold, okay? With uh, the body parameter that has a center, child text home okay so we can identify those two uh, different uh, those two different screen and what i'm going to go ahead and do is copy that and under profile copy it and just rename the widget profile okay and 
the thing here profile so we can actually differentiate those two screens. And what we are going to do now into the persistent navbar.dart is here under our build screens, we need to say that we want to return home and profile. All right. And now, one thing that is really important into this package is the number of items that you have in your list within the build screen needs to be the same as the number of items that you have in your navbar items, right? That makes sense because if you have two items in your navbar, you need two screens to, to re redirect to the right screen, right? If you have three, three screen here and only two items, well, it's not going to be possible. Right. And the last thing that we can do in order for it to uh, be a little bit more beautiful here is actually use the font uh, awesome package. And uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you'd see that they provide you with some icons. So we can just copy that line, for example. And here for the first item that we have, we are going to replace it with the font awesome icon. So importing the library and instead of a gamepad, we can say uh, home but it's discontinued, so now they say house. So let's use house. And for the second one, we can say uh, a person that would work for a profile account, right? And here, uh, the bar is using Cupertino colors, but you can say that the active color can be colors dot blue, or uh, dot blue, sorry, and that the inactive color can be uh, colors dot gray in order to have like uh, your uh, your material colors but you can also go ahead and say that the colors are the theme colors right and so it's consistent throughout the entire app and so if you go ahead and save that the last thing that we need to do is import persistent tab screen within our app view dot dart right save that thing and normally if i uh, rebuild the app yeah you will see on the uh, bottom that we have now home and profile, okay? So now we have just a little problem with the uh, icons. So let me let me try and see what's going on with those little icons uh, and I will be right there. All right, so the only thing that I had to do was to rebuild uh, the app because when you import packages like this, sometimes when your app is already running, you end up having some problems, but just uh, close the app and relaunch it. And you can see now, that we have our uh, bottom navigation bar. And you can see that there is so many different parameters for the persistent tab view, right? And so we can explore just a little bit, like you can see here, the nav bar style, we have it at one, but if we change it to two, the app bar changes to three, four, you know, you can explore all of those different uh, different style, right? And uh, that's pretty cool because then if you are to create different different type of apps, you can customize it uh, as it goes. And you can see here that we need to actually change um, the color of our icon and of our text because it's hidden behind uh, the, the blue color of the app bar. But all of those things are highly customizable, right? So you can also have the screen transition that we have here, right? It's a curve dot ease, as you can see. Perhaps it would be a bit easier for you if we have a background color of on our, uh, on our um, uh, let's say, uh, home screen and on our profile screen up, let me add some quick coloring to that. When we click, you see that the transition is due for f f 200 milliseconds. But if I say 600 milliseconds, you see it's slower. Of course it is. And if I say a thousand, so at one second, it's really slower. So you can really have full control of, over most of the thing. And what's actually really cool is the state management as well. It allows you without having to worry about doing it yourself, maintain the state in all of the different screen that you are in. And that's, for example, if you're on the home screen and uh, you are scrolled down the feed, for example, and you go to the search screen and you go back to the home screen, you'd still be at the same level of scroll, right? Or if you are into a navigation down the line and you can click on another tab, you'd still, if you go back, be at the same place where you were uh, in the navigation um, uh, tree, right? So it's pretty cool. And then you can change the color of the background, the, the border and everything. It's highly customizable. I really 
invite you to explore this package because it will save you a tremendous amount of time. What you can also have here is the uh, on tap, I think, uh, method um, from the, the app bar, I think, uh, on item selected, it's that. And that's that's especially useful if you are to uh, request new data when you come back to the home screen or it's like here within the value you have the index of the tab that you have uh, that you have selected right so if i say uh, to show you a little demonstration so if the value is equal to uh, 0 i think uh, print home uh, else print profile, for example. So here, if I click, it's index zero, it's home, and here it's profile, right? So it, you can do customized thing depending on only that uh, persistent navigation bar, which is at the very top of all of your screens, because it's from here that you will distribute to your home, to your profile. And so that's directly here that you would, for example, wrap your home uh, screen with the a block provider or your profile screen with a block provider. So you have a central place where you can customize everything, right? And if you want to change uh, the icon size and you think that's too big, you can. You know, it's like everything is customizable and I highly recommend using this package and, and make it your own, right? Make it work for you. And um, yeah, so I really hope that this video helped you guys understand a little bit more what's going on with all of those uh, bottom navigation bar because there is something to build a bottom navigation bar um, stock with Flutter, but I found this package super useful. Let me know in the comment section if you like this format of video shorter, uh, more straight to the point, and uh, I'll be happy to make uh, uh, way more of those videos in the futures. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.